Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting radical equation. A radical equation with complex numbers. We've done a similar problem before. I'll share the links down below. And you can also check that out here. So we have square root of x plus the square root of negative x equals 3 minus i. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting three methods, even though the first method is not going to be complete. I'm just going to give you an outline because that is going to be time consuming and kind of cumbersome. So that's why I'm just going to skip over it real quick. And since that's going to be kind of like a, you know, incomplete solution, I'm going to do that at the end. So I hope you don't mind. I'll start with the second method. And we haven't started with the second method for a while. So now for my second method, I'm going to do the following. We have square root of x plus square root of negative x equals 3 minus i. I'm going to go ahead and write the square root of negative x in terms of square root of x, obviously, right? And you could probably tell that this is not going to work with real numbers unless x is 0, because if square root of x is well defined, then negative x isn't, because x and negative x cannot be positive at the same time. And 0, obviously, is not a solution, so x must be non real. Make sense? So here's what I'm going to do. In order to express n square root of negative x in terms of square root of x, I'm going to replace the negative x with negative 1 times x. So here's what I'm going to do. Negative 1 times x. And then replace the negative 1 with i squared. So we're going to get square root of i squared x, which is equivalent to square root of negative x, right? And now, and obviously we're going to get different solutions we, when we consider square roots differently because the square root of a complex number is multi-valued and there are actually two complex square roots. But let's go with the positive one. I'll tell you why the other one works. Uh, we'll deal with that at the end. It's a lot easier that way. So let me go ahead and take out uh, the square root of i squared as i. So it's going to be square root of x plus i times the square root of x equals 3 minus i. Hopefully this makes sense, right? So far so good. Now we can go ahead and factor out square root of x. That's going to give us 1 plus i. And notice that this problem kind of turns into a division problem. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by 1 plus i. And if you divide a complex number by another complex number, you are going to get a complex number. You can do this division problem setting it equal to a plus pi and solve for a and b, but that's kind of like a longer method. Uh, let's go ahead and use the conjugates, complex conjugates. Multiply the top and the bottom by 1 minus i. So by the way, if you have a plus bi, its complex conjugate is going to be a minus bi, so that their product and sum are both real numbers. That is the definition. When you distribute, you're going to get 3 minus 3i minus i plus i squared. And the bottom is going to be 1 squared plus 1 squared from difference of 2 squares, but with the complex number, it's kind of like a sum of 2 squares. That's going to be a 2. Let's go ahead and simplify the numerator. i squared is negative 1, so 3 minus 1 is 2, and that's going to be minus 4i, and that's divided by 2. Remember, this is square root of x, not x yet, right? So let's go ahead and simplify square root of x, and then we'll find x from here. Guess what? We're going to square both sides. Awesome. So this becomes 1 minus 2i. And if you square both sides at this point, you should be getting x from here, right? And x would be 1 minus 4i plus 4i squared. Now, 4i squared is negative 4 because i squared is negative 1. So this becomes 1 minus 4, which is negative 3 minus 4i. Obviously, this is one of the solutions because remember, when we did the work, we kind of took the positive square root. But guess what? When you have an equation like square root of x plus square root of negative x equals something constant, and if you replace x with negative x, this is still going to work, which means if x is a solution, then negative x is a solution. So if we call this x sub 1, x sub 2 is just going to be opposite of x sub 1, which is 3 plus 4i. So those are both going to be solutions. In other words, this equation has two solutions. And they're opposites, not conjugates. 
Okay, makes sense? And obviously you can check this out by finding the square root of 3 plus 4i and then finding the square root of negative 3 plus 3, negative 3 minus 4i and then adding them together, you should be getting 3 minus i. Okay, cool, cool. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go with the third method next because second method we did first, third is next and first will be last. Again, first method will be incomplete. Okay, so the original problem said square root of x plus square root of negative x equals 3 minus i. So here's what I'm going to do. And I think a lot of people are going to go with this. Square both sides, right? If you have radicals, square both sides it usually works. And when you have a plus b squared, you're going to square the first term, which is going to give you x. Square the second term. It's something interesting happens when you square square root of negative x, you get negative x or minus x. So they're going to cancel out. Plus, what do you get when you multiply these two together? You get 2 times the square root of negative x squared. You've got to be careful. You're multiplying x by negative x, and that product is negative x squared. And what about the right-hand side? That's easy. You're going to get 9 minus 6i plus i squared. But i squared is negative 1, so that's going to give you 8 minus 6i. Let's go ahead and simplify the left-hand side first. x minus x is 0 and we get 2 times the square root of negative x squared. So how do you simplify square root of negative x squared? Can I write it as 2 times the square root of i squared x squared? Right? We should be able to. And then the right-hand side is 8 minus 6i, as I told you before. Now, i squared, we have to square root it. Again, this brings us two different solutions because square root of i squared can be i or negative i. Now, think about it in the complex world. Uh, the, a complex number has two square roots because when you square both of these numbers, you get i squared. Make sense? That's why we get those two solutions that are opposites. But let's just go with the positive and then we'll just negate it. So this will become 2ix equals 8 minus 6i. And finally, to find x, what would you do? Multiply, I mean divide, you know what I meant, by 2i. Divide by 2i. Great. Now let's go ahead and get rid of the i here. Multiply by negative i, the conjugate, remember, not i, but negative i. Why? Because i times negative i is 1, that's why. This is going to be negative i squared, which is 1. Total, forget about it. So the top is going to be negative 8i plus 6i squared divided by 2. i squared is negative 1, so this is going to be negative 6 minus 8i divided by 2x and from here, you're going to get negative 3 minus 4i as before. And obviously, if this is x sub 1, x sub 2 is going to be 3 plus 4i as before. As you can see, the solutions are opposites because if x is a solution, negative x is a solution too. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first method real quick because, oh man, that's going to be real long, so I don't think you want to go through this. So here's how I outlined my solution. I didn't complete it, but... Let me know if you do it uh, fully and get a solution. I don't even know if this works because I haven't uh, do it completely. So anyways, I just want to show you my uh, ideas. So I'm just going to say, hey, suppose x is equal to a plus bi, then negative x is going to be negative a minus bi. You could also call them uh, like z sub 1, whatever, something like that, like complex numbers. And the absolute value of x is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. And absolute value of negative x is going to be the same, so on and so forth, right? And then what we're going to do is find the angle, tangent, tangent alpha. It's just going to be 10 inverse, right? Alpha is going to be, or I should probably write it as b over a. So from here, alpha is going to be 10 inverse of b over a. Now notice that x and negative x are going to be like this. If x is in the first quadrant, then negative x is going to be its opposite. So in other words, we're adding pi to the angle. So the other angle is just going to be this angle plus pi. So in other words, here's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to write x in polar form. And then once I do that, something like, you know, r times e to the power i alpha. Then I'm going to take the square root. That's going to be the square root of r times e to the power i alpha over 2. And the other number is just going to be square root of r, same r, e to the power i times alpha over 2 plus pi over 2, because when you divide by 2, uh, you're adding pi, remember, originally, right? Uh, and then it'll be cut in half, and so on and so forth. And this is too long, as you can see. 
brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.